Today I'm reviewing two runners from Hoka One One, the Rincon and the Clifton 6. If I reviewed them separately, I would just repeat myself too much. The name Hoka One One is a Maori phrase that loosely translates to fly over the earth. They started as a French company in 2009, were purchased by Deckers, a US company that makes Ugg boots in 2013, and are now based in California. Hoka shoes are all about the high cushion midsole. Originally very popular with ultra marathoners, they are now one of the most popular brands for all forms of running. Although Elaine doesn't like them, she calls them clown shoes. Firstly, We'll discuss aspects common to both the Rincon and the Clifton, and generally synonymous with most shoes from Hoka One One. Cushioning. When you think of hockers, you think about huge amounts of cushion in the midsole. The softness and the amounts of cushioning varies from shoe to shoe, but they really protect your legs when running on hard surfaces. Next, the Meta Rocker. The toes of the shoes are a little bit higher, Shoe rocks forward during transition, gives you a bit more of a spring off. The meta rocker in the Hokers is fairly subtle, especially compared to something like the Glide Rides. If you're not engaging the meta rocker in the Hokers, they're, they're still good to run on. For me, I tend to start to notice the meta rocker when running on hard surfaces during the back half of my runs. I never notice the meta rocker on trails, seems to need the harder surface to leverage off. I also don't notice it when I'm forefoot striking. As I fatigue, I naturally drop back to a midfoot strike, and that's when I notice the meta rocker. It's like a little boost when I need it most. Finally, stability. Hokers have a wide outsole, and the foot sits slightly in the midsole rather than on top, which provides very good stability. The shoe has very little sideways movement and your foot is restricted within the shoe. As someone who over pronates, I notice the benefits. Specifically, less knee soreness during and after compared to the same runs in other shoes. And now for the cons. Hokers and narrow. For me, the number one problem is the fit. I like a snug fit around the ankle and midfoot and then prefer a wider toe box. Hokers are the opposite. My usual size is 11 and a half. I went down to an 11 in the Rincons to get the right fit around the ankle and midfoot. Running on the treadmill in the store, toe box felt fine. But towards the end of a long run, my toes aren't always happy. I also get a hot spot in the arch during longer runs. Have never experienced this in other shoes. I bought the Cliftons online during the pandemic because I wanted them for long runs. I went back to a size 11.5. It feels better in the toe box, but the shoes in general are too big. I also experienced the same hot spot in the arch as I did in the Rincons. For the Cliftons, I have to wear thick winter running socks, which could be a problem in summer. For the Rincons, I have to wear medium thickness socks, which is disappointing for such a light shoe. I've also discovered where I need to pull the laces really tight, which has helped a lot, but this means elastic laces will never work on the hokers for me, so I can't use them in a triathlon. The next con for me is lack of ground feel. Maximal cushioning and very high stacks means you feel more disconnected from the ground. I'm someone who likes ground feel, sometimes referred to as proprioception. I won't go into the whole minimalist versus maximalist argument in this video, but I would recommend having some lower stack runners in your rotation to complement the hokers. My last con is durability. Possibly not related to all hokers, but I'm not sure how long the outsoles will last, especially on the ring cons. The tougher wearing outsole material is heavier, so less outsole and more exposed midsole results in less weight. You can see on the Rincon, they have carved out part of the midsole to save even more weight. The Clifton has more outsole patches, a little hard to see because they're similar colour to the midsole, but I wouldn't expect these to last 800 kilometres 
like a lot of my shoes. Still on durability, how long will the cushioning in the midsole last? Hokers are all about the cushion. So if the cushioning goes, that's pretty much the end of the shoe. I've heard some reviewers suggest that the amount of outsole material is relevant to the life of the midsole. So if the cushioning in the midsole is going to be dead after 400 kilometers, put just enough outsole material to last that long. Now specifically about the Rincon. We'll talk about the midsole later. We'll just focus on the upper for the moment. The heel counter is quite solid. There's what I would call adequate cushioning around the ankle. The tongue has enough cushion. I can pull these laces quite tight with no discomfort. The upper itself really has no structure to it at all. And it's so thin, you can actually see straight through it. Some people have complained about the very thin inner sole. If we look at the inner from the Clifton, we can see that's reasonably substantial. The Rincon inner sole is glued down, so I'm not going to pull that out, but I suspect they went a very thin insole for weight savings. And when you have so much cushion in a shoe, I don't think you necessarily need a thick insole. I've complained about the small toe box and the hot spot I get in the arch. So it'll probably surprise you when I say, I think the shoes are actually quite comfortable in a minimalist sort of way which is what I tend to like. If you want a real cushy shoe that feels cushioned all over, the Rincon is not for you. And you're not going to get a lightweight shoe with that cushioning feel all over. If we look at the Clifton Upper, it's actually quite similar to the Rincon, but just a bit more everywhere. So there's more padding on the heel. There's more padding on the tongue. The Upper is still has no structure, but it's a little bit thicker, I can't see through it. And we mentioned before that the insole is actually more substantial than what we have in the Rincon. Differences between the Rincon and the Clifton. The Rincon is lighter. In fact, for the size of the shoe, it feels unnaturally light, as though the midsole has been infused with helium. Rincon's Meta Rocker is a little more noticeable. That might be because the midsole feels more stiff. So a little bit more energy return and a touch less cushion. Both versatile shoes, Rincon is more suited to faster efforts, lighter, touch more energy return. The Clifton, more suited to slower and longer events. The cushion is a little more soft. The Clifton's will definitely outlast the Rincon's. After just 220 kilometers, I've already bald spotted some of the outsoles on the, on the Rincon's. I'm estimating 400 to 500 kilometers or 250 to 310 miles for the Rincons and 600 to 700 kilometers or 370 to 430 miles for the Cliftons. Less durability for the Rincon, but they retail over 10% cheaper. How will I use them? If the run is on hard surfaces or I'm feeling a bit sore, I'm most likely to grab one of the Hokers. Faster runs, I'm going to lean towards the Rincons, longer or slower runs, the Cliftons. At the moment, all my runs are slow, but I've still been running in the Rincons. I probably wouldn't use either in future races, mainly due to the fit, which is usually a bigger issue in a race. But if they fit you, I would highly recommend the Rincons for half and full marathons. I have a friend who raced last year's Melbourne Marathon in the Rincons. I think he ran a 2.55 and was very happy with them. I could see the Clifton's being good for marathons, especially for athletes around the four hour mark. The extra cushioning can make a big difference. Would I buy the Rincon again? Despite the fit issues, definitely yes. The best shoe for fast efforts on hard surfaces, as well as being a really versatile shoe. At $200 in Australia, they are also priced quite well. That's only $10 more than the Saucony Kinvara same price as the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel and $30 less than the Cloudflow. Would I buy the Cliftons again? Probably yes. If the fit was better, it would be a definite yes. I still prefer the Beacons for shorter runs, much better fit. Still deciding between the Glide Rides and the Cliftons for long runs, again, the Glide Rides are a better fit. At $230 in Australia, Cliftons are on the expensive side. 
$60 more than the Beacons, $30 more than the Rincons, and same price as the Glide Ride. In Clifton's favour is its versatility. It is one of my more recent shoe purchases, but the mileage is going quickly. It is a shoe I continually grab. Admittedly, I'm doing all easy runs, trying to build up my weekly mileage, but I can still see myself using these shoes a lot in the future. Any time I'm feeling a bit sore, I grab the Cliftons. New versions for both of these are being released next month in August. From the reviews I've seen, it's just minor changes to the upper. The midsoles remain the same, so they maintain the same feel. New releases mean clearance sales for current stock. So a great opportunity to get these at a cheap price. I hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching.